Hello, Facebook community. I'm Christina Mozafari for HIV.gov, and we're here in Montreal at the International AIDS Conference. I am very fortunate to be joined by Dr. Carl Diefenbach. He's the director of the, of the Division of AIDS at the National Institutes of Allergy, Infectious Diseases, and also at the NIH. Doctor, thank you so much for being here with me today. It's always a pleasure to join HIV.gov via Facebook Live from these meetings. You know, we were talking earlier about just how extraordinary it is that so many people showed up to this conference. Can you tell me a little bit more about that and why it's important as we continue to address the HIV epidemic both in the U.S. and around the world? So if you think about the, the history of HIV, uh, and the progress that we've made. It has been this amazing coalition of researchers, community, companies, all coming together to fight for the common good. And the way that has played out over time has been these large meetings where we get together, we talk, we share stories, we form new collaborations. And we've really missed that for the last several years. So the fact that we had the opportunity to come here to Montreal, in, in on Moss, we've had um, over 12,500 people register for this meeting, and the vast majority of those people registered to be here in person. That speaks volumes for this these communities to need to come together, have these meetings, and plan for our accelerated uh, treatment, uh, acceleration of treatment and prevention as we move uh, forward uh, to fight HIV. You know, this is the first official day of the conference, but there have been some pre-conference activities. And one was a pretty major announcement about the efficacy of an injectable prophylactic, an injectable PrEP drug called CAB-LA. Can you tell me more about that? So over the past um, five or six or seven years, the NIH, in collaboration with Vive Healthcare, has been performing studies. One study in men who have sex with men and transgendered individuals, and another study in women called HPTN 084. And what was, and both demonstrated superiority of CAB LA, as we call it, against oral TDF FTC. Fast forward to the announcement at, at this conference is there's been a, additional data has been collected on the durability and effectiveness in women of CAB LA. And it not only held up, but it is really looking really exquisitely good as we move forward uh, and make this drug available to women, not just in the United States, but around the world. So I was thinking about it and wondering, you know, part of the idea of the, why this is so great is because you only have to take the drug once every eight weeks. You know, for me, if I had to remember something in eight week increments, I actually might forget rather than that daily habit of taking a pill. Was that taken into consideration? So I think we have to think about what fits best and what works in HIV prevention for a person is something that fits within their lifestyle and they will actually use. Pills don't take themselves. Injections don't occur on their own. So you have to have a person who's either motivated for taking a pill or somebody who could be motivated to receive an injection. But this gives us opportunities for choice and that is ultimately what, we, what we're seeking to build is a toolkit of prevention methods that give men and women choices for how they wish to keep themselves happy, loving, and free of HIV. There was another announcement made about the effectiveness of doxycycline um, after exposure uh, when it comes to helping to prevent STIs. Can you tell me more about that? Sure, this is a, this is a study that was literally <coughs> unveiled at this conference. Uh, the, the, the data was embargoed up until, I think, just yesterday. And the study looked at post-exposure prophylaxis in men who have sex with men, whether they're on PrEP or living with HIV. And we were, and the idea was after condomless sex, you were to take um, doxycycline, and then what was measured was the impact of the incidence in these populations of three STIs gonorrhea, syphilis, and chlamydia. And in all cases, there was a profound reduction in the level of the people who received the doxycycline. And there was not any statistically significant difference between the levels of effectiveness uh, for this medication um, in people who were living with HIV versus those who were on PrEP. So this is a very important study in terms of 
defining a path forward to help us continue to build healthy sexual activity for this population so that um, STIs are less of a risk. Everything is about risk mitigation, uh, and this is a, an important, can become ultimately an important tool in the armamentarium. I mean, these are two huge announcements that can really help to impact the lives of so many people. And this is just the beginning of the conference. It, what more are you looking forward to? Are there any particular topics you're looking forward to? So we have a couple of, so we're, there's a lot of con discussion at this conference about the future of HIV vaccine research. And there's a whole set of new studies coming forward called experimental medicine trials, which are seeking to define the immunogens, the specific prototype vaccines that can be used to build a better human immune response that is truly protective against HIV. So a number of those kinds of studies are being discussed here at this meeting, and there's been some very interesting progress made on these points. Um, additionally, it is just great to see everybody and have us hear about what the U.S. government is doing in ending the HIV epidemic. We have a new PEPFAR ambassador with John Kanengas on, he's here. Um, Harold Phillips is here. This is the place to be, and it's great that we can get together and have conversations with our domestic colleagues, with our international colleagues, and build a better future for people living with HIV and those at risk of acquiring HIV. Well, Dr. Diefenbach, we'll have more conversations soon. In the meantime, thank you so much for your time, and we look forward to hearing more from you about the rest of the conference. Great to be here.